You want me to put that on my todger? This one's wife. You've sunk your own ship. It's commonly the case that narcissists cause problems for themselves, naturally for other people, but also for themselves, as a consequence of the pursuit of the prime aims. Lesser and mid-range narcissists, both of which are unaware, operate very much in the moment and do not think ahead as to what they're doing. Accordingly, this approach serves them excellently well with regard to the gaining of control and the drawing of fuel, character traits and residual benefits, but what it doesn't enable them to do is cause them to have stable lives. Some narcissists are more stable than others, but often you will find that the narcissist has a succession of failed relationships in an intimate arena, that the narcissist will have been in and out of work or moved job to job, that friends are gained and friends are lost, that there are fractious relationships with family members, that their finances go up and down. As mentioned, some are more stable than others, but you will always be able to find the casualties, if you will, of the narcissism. And this one's wife is entirely in keeping with that. Married once already, possibly twice, dependent on which version you believe. A string of intimate partners, none of whom who particularly speak favourably about her. The best she gains is they say nothing, which tells its own story. The fact that she has childhood friends that are scattered to the four winds, that she has nothing to do with her father, her half-sister, her half-brother. The fact that she has nothing to do with extended members of the royal family. The fact that she has fallen out with members of staff, that people have resigned from working for her. All of this is demonstrative of the chaotic nature of the narcissist and the collateral consequences that are created. All the narcissism cares about is gaining control. So if gaining that control in that moment enables the narcissist to gain it by, say, punching somebody in the face, control is gained in that moment. But thereafter, that person they've just punched, who, let's say, might be a friend, decides to terminate the friendship. The friendship has gone which then creates another threat to control because that person has essentially moved themselves out of the fuel matrix. But the narcissist is likely either to complain about that person, they went for me first, I defended myself and look at them, now they won't talk to me, smearing them to other people to gain an indirect assertion of control, or essentially jettisoning them by turning around and saying, forget it, I don't want to be friends with somebody like that. And thus in the circumstances... That enables the narcissist to nullify the second threat to control that comes along, but they've lost a friend. It could be the case that the narcissist erupts at work, shouting and screaming at a superior as part of the assertion of control in that moment. Yet, they end up getting sacked. Once again, their sacking is a threat to their control. Their narcissism will cause them either to complain about it to somebody else or retreat saying, I never wanted this fucking job anyway. Again, control is obtained, but they've gone and lost their job. And thus, time and time and time again, you will see with narcissists, especially those of the lesser and mid-range variety, that they will end up, in a particular way, causing that chaos that they will cause problematic behaviours for themselves, but they will never ever understand that it is their fault. The narcissism steps in to blind them to that. The narcissism tells them that the reason they lost their job was because they have an unreasonable boss. The reason that that friend walked away is because they're a pain in the arse and a wimp. The narcissist will never ever accept accountability for their actions. This one's wife has caused fallings out, strife and problems all around her throughout her life. And once again, in an attempt to settle scores by utilising the improbably named plastic-faced Weasley Lickspittle Lieutenant Obin Scobie as a means to smear the royal family, her attempts to achieve this in asserting control in that moment have ended up backfiring. 
Daniela Elsa writes in news.com.au, Bell End Game. Explosive Royal Book ruins this one's wife's rebrand. Indeed, it does. As I mentioned yesterday, the smearing has backfired. But let's see now how that backfiring is now amplified in the press. Elsa writes, If you fancy some midweek irony, step right up. Just as a new firestorm engulfs both Buckingham Palace and the House of Monty Shitshow, there was Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, an indefatigable trooper in Colombia, visiting the Centre for Memory, Peace and Reconciliation. Reconciliation? Maybe in Bogota, but not Buckingham Palace right now. This week has seen the release of the new book, Bell Endgame, by Duke and Duchess of Sussex sympathiser, and of course Lieutenant, Omid Scobie, and which has dished up a fresh round of damaging claims about the firm and all those who punch in every day. You didn't know that the Princess of Wales has a time card, but of course. You might think that the biggest loser, the person who has suffered the largest setback since Scobie decided to plump for a second bestseller, might be a certain king who has trouble using pens and making time for his firebrand younger son. You would be wrong. Instead, spare a thought for this one's wife, the Duchess of Sussex, today, as she watches a year's worth of hard work be dashed by one single solitary slip, Scobie's new Roman atone death. Let me explain. For now, on a number of days, the pipeline of revelations from Bell Endgame, a book which bears literary resemblance to a microwave sausage roll, limp and not exactly that exciting, have been issuing forth and shock horror. They paint Crown Inc. as a useless bunch of egos, hooked on the narcotic of good press. Also, Prince William is in a huge rush to get the orb and sceptre of state and is chumping to get the regal bit between his teeth. Kate, the Princess of Wales, is a limp and useless dolly who needs chivying along to do anything more than gardening or baby dandling for the cameras. And King Charles got all weepy over clipping the wings of Prince Andrew, pal of convicted sex offenders. All of which was bad enough for the palace and then came it, the moment that has loomed over their majesties, all the HRHs and the men in grey since that sun-dappled day in early 2021 when this one's wife sat down with softball interlocutor Oprah Winfrey. The unmasking of the family member who had raised concerns and conversations about how dark the skin colour of the couple's first baby. At the time, the Duchess demurred when it came to naming names, saying that would be very damaging to them. Except... Now, the cat is out of the bag thanks to a Dutch publisher, with the local language version naming the so-called Royal Racist. Let us pause here to observe the lightning bolts and thunderclaps currently breaking over Monarchy HQ as the Royal Family absorbs the gravity of all of this. While Endgame has been yanked from the shelves in the Netherlands, the biggest Royal mystery since the Princes in the Tower has now been solved. The Daily Mail's royal editor, Rebecca English, has reported that, generally speaking about the Burke, there is shock in palace circles this week. I think everyone is shocked at the malice and the deliberate cruelty of what he has written, not to mention the misogyny of much of what he says, a source told English. Spare a thought in all of this for this one's wife, whose nascent relaunch and rebranding efforts have thus thoroughly been torpedoed. This year has seen the Duchess change tack dramatically. There has not been a single interview rehashing royal slights or referencing Nelson Mandela or presenting up the she and Harry as brave and embattled warriors for truth and soft focus close-ups. Instead, the <clears throat> 42-year-old has spent this year on what looks like self-imposed mute with Harry's book Spare and Harry's doco Heart of Invictus and Harry's big charity event, the Invictus Games, being the sum total of Planet Archwell's major output. Think of this as the Duchess creating a firebreak between the Sussex brand of yore, them trapped in a vinegary groundhog day of victimhood, and this one's wife 2.0. For months now, every single bit of reporting out of Monty Shitshow 
and London, has said that the Duchess is busy building some sort of exciting entrepreneurial digital thingamabob, which may or may not have something to do with wellness. Whatever it is, you just know that the phrase authentic self is going to get slung around with glee abandon. Scobie himself writes that the reason that this one's wife did not attend the king's coronation was because she didn't want to dive back into the soap opera of the court. Clearly, grey, drizzly Britain, where personal journey means talking about how long it took you to navigate the Fulham Road traffic snarl is out, and carbohydrate-free powwows over three mineral water lunches are in. Recent months have seen the Duchess energetically throw her Philip Tracy hat in the Hollywood ring, hanging out with names such as Jeff Bezos, Chris Jenner, Netflix box Ted Sarandos and Kim Kardashian, attending a charity fundraiser with Harry, hosted by Kevin Costner and prominently featuring Winfrey, and doing the red carpet like a seasoned professional at Variety's Power of Women event. The clear takeaway, the former Suits star wants to move on from the Sussex's reputation as TV and podcasting dilettantes, whose successes can be fitted on the back of a beer mat, and who are wholly dependent on banging on about that palace palaver, and to relaunch herself as an entertainment power player in her own right. Except you know what they say about best laid plans. Now, Bell Endgame and its Dutch translation have well and truly blown that hope out of the water. Because, like it or not, this one's wife has just been sucked back into the soap opera. She's back to square one, and back to being mired in those claims of cruelty, unconscious bias, and conniving palace forces that she seems so keen to leave behind. So much for a clean start, and a fresh start for this one's wife. Bell Endgame, in the allegation that it was Charles who had concerns over his unborn grandson's skin colour, has just scuppered the Duchess's project to move on, brand-wise from the events and interviews of recent years. In Scobie and co-author Carolyn Durant's previous book, Finding Freedom, he writes of a moment in March 2020, when the Sussexes undertook their final official engagement, saying, As this one's wife gave me final hug goodbye, she said, it didn't have to be this way. This one's wife, delving back into the soap opera, is of her own doing. Her narcissism has caused her to throw these allegations around, which either didn't happen in the sense that nothing was said at all, or there was speculation but it wasn't done in the way that she has portrayed it to be, which are several years old. It demonstrates how the narcissist brings up the past in order to control the now, but it has backfired, because people see it for what it is, malicious, unpleasant, nasty, and unnecessary. It further reinforces in people's mind just what an odious individual this one's wife is. The reviews of the book are not favourable, and nobody, save the deluded sugars, accepts that there is nothing between. This one's wife and Omid Scobie, everybody else recognises that he is their cheerleader and mouthpiece, and just in the way that Finding Freedom and Spare had the paw prints and fingerprints and cloven hooth stamped all over it from this one's wife, so has Bell Endgame. This one's wife, for the necessity of achieving control and smearing the nemesis and Charles, has sunk her own ship. All of the effort that she has placed into trying to rebrand herself by making herself out to be a power player has just been completely undone by the fact that people can see that once again she just will not let it go in relation to the royal family, that people are only interested in her because of the royal family, that she is incapable of doing anything other than claiming that she's a victim of poor behaviour, when in actual fact she is the one that routinely engages in such activity. This one's wife, in attempting to smear and to assert control, has sunk a hole in her own ship, and down below the waves she goes. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.